I like to have an amazing breakfast, but sometimes I don't want to wake up too early to cook it. So today I've decided to make a bunch of breakfast freezer meals and just store them in the freezer so that we can have a yummy breakfast without someone having to wake up at the wee hours of the morning. And the first thing I want to do is to take care of my French toast. For French toast to work, you have to have like really thick, 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 thick slices. And that's why I prefer to make my own homemade bread. I've done a video showing how to do this. If you're interested, you can check it out. So this was rising in my oven for about an hour. I want to cover it a bit because now I want to preheat the same oven and then leave my bread baking at 375 degrees so let me preheat that for 10 minutes then i'll pop the bread in there and it's going to be ready in the meantime i want to work on the blueberry pancakes so as that is going on i want to make some buttermilk for my pancakes using buttermilk is better than actually using milk because it just makes your butter to be a bit the pancakes to be more fluffy so i have three cups of milk and i'm putting uh, four tablespoons of apple cider vinegar. Preferably it should be white vinegar, but potato, potato, four. So I'm just going to start this and stand it somewhere on the side as I mix everything else. So you can see it's already started to cuddle. So we are on the right track. So now I want to whisk my dry ingredients. Because I really want my pancakes to be fluffy, I'm going to sieve my flour. You don't have to do it, absolutely don't have to. So I'm going to put here three cups of wheat flour. All purpose, mine is all purpose mixed with brown, mixed with whole wheat flour. Three. Then I'm going to add five tablespoons of sugar. One, two, four, five. Then one and a half teaspoons of baking soda. One and a half. Uh, teaspoon of salt okay there we go mix this up I set aside my dry ingredients my buttermilk is now full-fledged buttermilk oh by the way if you're in Kenya you can use mala buttermilk is generally just mala all right so dump it right there then I'm going to put in two eggs. One, my second egg there. And lastly, two teaspoons of vanilla. Eight tablespoons. Two. I six and mix, 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 mix. So my oven is preheated. Let me put in the bread. And then we continue. Yeah, it's nice and warm. And there we have it. Blueberries. And fold them in. So let's take this to the stove. I'm putting a little bit of olive oil just so that it doesn't stick. Then, because I like my pancakes to be the same size, I'm going to use a measuring cup. Like a quarter cup. Let's see the size. Two 
it's not a bad size and this way I can make two I hope I can make two so you know your pancake is done when it's on the other side when it starts bubbling here on top and the edges start looking a bit firm let's flip it oh yeah nice oh my gosh are you kidding me right now <laughs> Okay, just pretend that didn't happen, okay, guys? Fuck! First ones are only for the chef anyway. And we're done. See how they look at the bottom? Ooh, nice. being ambitious as we said first one is for the chef oh my blueberry juice is leaking man yum look at that so well done through and through what mm. really nice the sugar is great not too much but just enough because sometimes you don't like to put syrup so mm. well done me okay it's okay my bread is ready very ready look at that beauty with some oil or some butter so this is nice because it gives us a nice crust. That's also soft. Okay. Oh, beautiful. So I'll let it rest here for like 10 minutes and then we'll remove it from the baking tray. Then we let the loaves cool down before we cut them up for our french toast can you even waffle time okay i'm waiting for my bread to cool the pancakes are cooling and you know i'm going to use the same in, in instruments <laughs> the same dishes because pancake butter and waffle butter are oddly similar but waffle is going to use baking powder not baking soda So, yeah, let's get this done. So into this, I'm going to put three cups of our flour. The same one. Eh? Because I'm extra, I'm going to save mine. You don't have to. Two and a half cups of milk. One. Two and a half. half a cup of oil. I'm using only if you can use vegetable, ideally vegetable oil. Half a cup. I'm putting in six tablespoons of sugar. Three, four, five. Then I'll put six teaspoons of baking powder. Yes, six. <laughs> Three, four, five, six. Then we need like a half a teaspoon of salt. And last one, two teaspoons. So now I'm preheating my waffle maker. I want to spray it with some oil, not spread some oil, not spray. I wish I had spray. And then we'll start making the waffles. I have some oil here, which was left over. Just so that our 
ruffles don't stick yeah so we wait for the green light to come on so once the green light has come on then we'll know we can put our first waffle you can get a waffle from Jumia if you're in Kenya or Amazon of course if you're not or if you are so now As that is going on, it's time to make the granola. I'm using six cups of oats and two cups of mixed crushed nuts. Today I have cashews and almonds, which I'm chopping because they're a bit big. I don't know why I didn't choose my food processor, but you know, I like to make my life hard sometimes. Hear the crickets, see the moon. Side side and through and through. No limit to what we can do. Oh, we know what we have, let's hold on tight. Found what we're looking for in life. Crazy, but things are finally right. With you and I, the future is bright. Oh, you and I, we got it. Oh. To this, I'm also going to add two teaspoons of cinnamon and half a teaspoon of salt and mix this up. In a pot, I'm adding half a cup of coconut oil. This is the coconut oil that we bought from Costco, if you haven't watched that video. And I'm also putting half a cup of honey, two teaspoons of vanilla. Now I'm going to heat this over the stove until it's nice and mixed. Once the oil and the honey and the vanilla have melted and mixed very well, I'm going to pour this mixture while still slightly warm into the dry ingredients and mix well. Once they have incorporated very well, I want to pour on my lined baking tray. And meantime, I forgot to say that I'm preheating the oven at 170 degrees centigrade. So I'm going to put all this mixture, which have flattened very well, into the oven, oven for 15 minutes. And then after 15 minutes, take them out, mix them up again, and bake for a further 15 minutes. I went a bit wild with the heat, <laughs> so they got burnt a bit. But yeah, 170 degrees centigrade, I think, is a sweet spot. But keep an eye on them. Ovens are different. So I'm making fantastic progress now as I wait for the granola to cool down so I can add the chocolate chips and the raisins I want to get on with the French toast for some reason today my bread did not rise the way it was supposed to but you know what it's still good some you win some you lose some I suppose I don't know whether it's the weather because it's a bit cold now in Nairobi I don't know whether it's because I used whole wheat 
I don't know, man, but it tastes good and that's all that matters. So for the French toast, I want to make an interesting butter that I found on the internet, which calls for wheat. I haven't seen one of these anywhere before, so let's try this. So quarter cup of wheat. This is actually my third cup. I couldn't find my quarter cup. Then a quarter cup of sugar. Okie dokie. Then we need two thirds. One. Two of milk. Whole milk, of course. Best ever. And then we need some cinnamon. One teaspoon. Oh my gosh, I finished my cinnamon. You know what? To have. Give me a minute. I think I have cinnamon somewhere. Mm -mm -mm. So I have some, some cinnamon here from when we were doing the kitchen makeover. <laughs> I ran out of glass jars and would you believe it? I've never gone to buy more salt. Ella. four large eggs. To a beautiful butter that we're going to use to toast our bread. And then, but then if you don't want to make your own bread, if you go like to supermarket like Naivas, you can ask them to give you one loaf before they've sliced it because i find like the slices of the normal bread is just such tiny slices those ones honestly they don't work for me but they can give you a whole loaf before they have sliced it then you come and slice for yourself make sure everything has mixed thoroughly i think the thing else because I've ended up with a bit of lumps that I've worked very hard to remove. Anyway, it was a good arm workout. So now I'm preheating my pan. In the meantime, I want to transfer this mixture to my this baking dish. Because it's flat enough and then I'll be able to coat my bread better. Okay. Look at all those lumps, man. Now we know. Now we know. So let's go to the fire. So now the drill is to just put my bread put it on both sides. You see why you need thick bread? Because any of those tiny slices would have already torn by now. Uh -huh. Drain out the excess and straight to the fire. Yeah. The reason we make my uh, French toast. Mm. I remember us going for dates. For picnic dates and we making french toast for us mm. or breakfast so now when they're ready I want to put it on the cooling rack not to stack them with all of these ingredients the waffles the pancakes because they are for the fr for the freezer we don't want to put them one on top of the other because you want them to dry individually which is the same way we are going to actually freeze them we're going to freeze them flat put them like on a tray and freeze them for like two three hours then once they are pre-frozen then now we can put them in a bag 
Because if you put them in a bag right now, the way they are, and put them in the freezer, they're going to stick to one another. And nobody wants that. Okay? So remember that if you try this. So the French toast is done and now time to finish with this granola. So it's cooled down nicely. I just want to pour it in here. Then I add the chocolate chips and the raisins and we're done. Yo. It smells so good you guys. It smells so good. That coconut oil. Oh my goodness. Do you know what I forgot to add? Ugh. I forgot to add desiccated coconut. Oh well, next time. So we put in our raisins. As many as your heart desires. That's a good amount, I think. And our chalk chips. Again, as many as you want. Ah, these are huge. Maybe I should chop them up a bit. I just feel it will be better when they are a bit smaller, you know. We are trying to go healthy. So you can uh, top this granola. You can put it on top of your yogurt. You can have it as cereal. You can have it as a dry snack. Kids love it. We love to put it over ice cream. Oh my goodness. It's such a hit. Or just toss it with the rest of your cereal. Like if you're having what? Cornflakes, Bitterbix. Just toss it in there for some added fiber and sweetness. Some chocolate. Nowadays, I'm very keen to have break, uh, vegetables when I'm having breakfast with every meal, but okay, I never used to have vegetables during breakfast time. So I really like when I go to a hotel and they have mushrooms. So I'm making some sauteed mushrooms with just in butter and garlic. Very simple. They freeze really well. I also want to blanch some uh, broccoli as well. These ones will freeze well. And on the day when I'm in a rush and I don't know what vegetables to have for breakfast, I'll pull this out simple and fast okay so I want to first clean my mushrooms then I'll slice them up this should be like literally a five minute dish so you know mushroom is something that I'm just starting to learn how to make so please feel free to tell me what I am doing right or wrong because I love to eat them, but still getting the hang of cooking them.
To blanch broccoli is basically just to first clean it and then put it in boiling water for maybe two, two to five minutes. So, cause I want it to soft, to cook, but not to get too soft. I want it to remain crunchy because obviously when I'll be reheating it, it's also going to get a bit cooked. So I don't want it to be like a soggy mess. So I want my, the broccoli to remain a bit crunchy, but nicely done. Now I'm making what I am calling an omelette pack, which is basically the vegetables I would need to make an omelette. Because you know, omelettes are so healthy and filling and chock full of vegetables, but uh, sometimes you're like, who has the time to wake up and chop up all those things? So this one will go into the fridge, not the freezer. And these chopped vegetables can stay in the fridge for five days even. So that when it's time to make the omelette, I won't need to start chopping these up. They'll be ready. All I need to do is to beat my eggs and throw in my vegetables. If I had some ham, I'd have done the same. And in a few minutes, the omelette is ready. omelets to also be a great way to get rid of old vegetables that you haven't used like now I found these courgettes in a in the fridge in the fridge jar <laughs> in the fridge and I'm just going to add it to my omelet pack so that we don't waste food but I'm going to cut them really small And it's done. Yes, plenty of breakfast freezer meals for us for the next um, for the next good long while. So here I have the waffles. They came out pretty nicely. So to freeze the waffles and the pancakes and the um, French toast, I'm going to put them on a tray in one layer in the freezer. And then once they have frozen for like two, three hours, then I can be able to put them in a freezer bag or I can wrap them individually and put them in a freezer bag. And to reheat them, the microwave is my go-to. Very easy 
one minute and you're done put your toppings enjoy your breakfast can you imagine breakfast in one minute huh when your kids are rushing off to school they're rushing off to work everybody's rushing off to somewhere fantastic so yes the waffles are ready the blueberry pancakes we've already tasted a few with the kiddos loved 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 them so much um my sauteed mushrooms oh my goodness i'm so jazzed that i have some vegetables in the freezer for me for breakfast and the blanched broccoli this will also freeze very well we've already talked about the french toast i have my omelette starter pack this should be enough to make omelettes for our whole household of seven for one morning so this will go into the fridge not the freezer and finally we have our granola baby yes plenty plenty of granola here this should also last us a long while you can also freeze granola just put in a ziploc bag in the freezer for like three months four months and you're good to go thank you so much for hanging out i also make our dinner freezer meals i love to do it for like a month or even up to six weeks and i'm feeling ambitious and that's the video that you should watch next so i'll see you over there bye